In the past, we've talked about so many disparate elements and how to navigate the pitfalls of good storytelling. Now, you've sat down to write out your masterpiece and have no idea where to begin. Don't worry, baby birds. The master of kung fu and friendship is back and here to feed you. Minus the gross parts that go along with that bird analogy. I'm DC Ferguson, author of the Wicked Instruments series, and this is the World Building Dojo. A book, a campaign, a screenplay, whatever you're writing, we're going to assume it will follow the linear classic narrative structure. So for you folks trying to write Memento or Twin Peaks, sorry, this won't help you much. But if you're going to go that ham, you probably don't need much help from me. Still, let me know when you're done, we'll make a blanket for it, be best friends, and I'll read your non-linear flashback avant-garde stuff. For the rest of us, we follow the classic three-act structure. Now, I've talked about the course of a story before with this handy guide right here, but now we need to get deeper. We have a story to write. That's right, we need more charts. So here's a breakdown of a three-act structure. Our act one begins with an intro, but it ends in this shady, vague term, commitment to the action. Because our stories aren't all about the same thing, this is intentionally vague. This is where our protagonist will see the stakes of the story, realize their place in it, and commit to being a part of it. For some, this means the hero chooses to walk the hero's path. In the case of romance stories, this is the choice to be with someone at the start of the relationship, or to pursue their love interest. In sci-fi, we find our enemy, or our anomaly. Whatever we've found, our plucky hero needs to commit to being in this story for the long haul. Now, Act 2 is the rise and fall. The rise is easy using our past examples. Um, so it's what you call the honeymoon period. Our hero plays with their new powers. Our lovers are basking in how much love they're loving and love. Our state-of-the-art spaceship is getting to work on the asteroid. The fall is where things get dicey. Our protagonist has to have a setback or a failure. This makes the defeat of our antagonist seem impossible. Our team splits up. Our lovers never want to see each other again. In Act 3, we're back to rising action that goes all the way to the climax. We just keep ramping up as the hero rises in ultimate power, one of our lovers decides they can't live without the other, or we have a crazy plan for this diamond asteroid. So we've gone over all that, and the only question is, what is your three-act structure? Once you have your great story idea, this really is what comes next. We want to look at the broad strokes here, so we don't have to get super detailed, we just want to know what happens where and when. So let's look at the three-act structure I originally came up with for The Singer and the Charlatan. It's not a coincidence that this looks so bare-boned. Your outlining always should start with some kind of a skeleton. What I like to do is to fit in tiny bits of detail to remind myself what major plot points need to be in each act. This gets more important than the next part. Your act-by-act -act breakdown is a great first step. Now we're going to get into more detail. In this portion, because the Master of Kung Fu and Friendship is always prepared and ready for any danger, I like to do chapter by chapter breakdown. Why? Well, we're not birds. Even our buddy the ostrich can't wing it, man. You see what I did there? Yeah, you saw that. Anywho, what I like to do is I write out the events of each chapter. It keeps me from meandering around the plot, it keeps me on task, and avoids the dreaded painting ourselves into a corner. Writing freestyle without a safety net and just making up the plot as you go is a recipe for disaster. I'll explain it in a bit, but let's take a quick peek at my chapter-by-chapter -chapter breakdown of The Singer and the Charlatan. Now, keep in mind, I wrote this novel two years ago at the time I'm posting this video. I've saved it all this time, and if you read my book, you might notice this is slightly different. That's because when you get to the actual writing of the story, things can change. Two chapters can fold into one, larger chapters might need to be split up, or an entire subplot might not be working. That's fine. We can revisit this later and make changes and smooth over the breakdown. Remember, this is a tool that we make to keep us on task. We're not a slave to it. If you do decide to fly by the seat of your pants, great. Give it your best. The only warning I will ever have for you is it's easy to get continuity errors doing things that way. If you go blind into it, I assure you, you're going to be blindsided when your audience finds the continuity errors for you. Then Doc Brown will kick down your wall like the Kool-Aid man and tell you how you have to repair the continuity or the whole world will cease to exist. He's not wrong, by the way. I'm going to give you a little aside for a second with my own personal experience. See, as some of you know, and many may not, the Wicked Instruments series was originally a Dungeons & Dragons campaign that I played with my wife, sister, and my brother-in-law. My first instinct in setting down to write this silly fantasy story was to copy all the riotous fun that took place in the original story. 
If you've ever played Dungeons & Dragons, there is no script. It's all improv. When it's going really well, the real world fades away, and everyone assumes the role of the character they're playing. Being that it's an improv format, though, sometimes the dungeon master, or the author of the story, is going to throw in a plot line or a plot hook or even a character that turns out to be useless in the overall story. But we can only see these sorts of things in hindsight. It's not different in any other kind of improv storytelling. I promise you one thing. Chapter breakdowns do help you to avoid this because you can see the whole book or the story from cover to cover before you've ever even written page one. This will help save you dozens of hours on the editing room floor cutting and smoothing over your work. So, now we know the work and the risks, let's put the pen to paper, shall we? That title's pretty funny to me. I never use numbers for chapters. It's kind of my thing, but I digress. Actually sitting down to write your story, there's a rhythm you want to find in chapter structure. This rhythm goes something like chapter, then sequel. The events of a plotline can unfold in one chapter, and then the solution comes in the next. We're going to mix it up a little, and I'll show you how, but you want this miniature rise and fall pumping through the blood of your work. In my second book, The Princess and the Holy Juggernaut, I intersperse the villain subplots as a break between the chapter sequel structure. It gives you a break from the action it sets up later plot lines, and it hits the pause button if a previous chapter needs that kind of pause for like dramatic effect. It creates a uh, I can't wait to see what happens next kind of vibe. Now, at this point, following this chapter sequel rhythm, the subplots that we have interspersed to keep our action moving, um, we should have a full roadmap of what happens in every act, which just gives us a beginning to end, then a chapter by chapter breakdown to allow us to stay on task. Just remember, this is our work, we're not slaves to this, and we can change it later as needed. This has been my process on every book I've written, and it serves me well. If you're doing it right, the hardest part is your chapter breakdown here because it's basically the book itself. If your outline is tight, I'd leave the hard part to you, and that's writing it. Sit down and write that bad boy. Oh, I have been away for a while. The Master of Kung Fu and Friendship did great deals of battle, but it was against mostly a pretty nasty flu. Nothing to fear, though. My individual cells are all made up of smaller Masters of Kung Fu, so now I'm back with a vengeance. The Wicked Instruments series is also getting a huge makeover, thanks to the talents of artist Natalia Patenko, the singer the charlatan, and the princess and the holy juggernaut now have a new cover. Check it out, huh? So fancy. The best part is, if you already have it on your Kindle reader, you've already got this new cover, which is pretty cool. If not, what the heck are you waiting for? It's hilarious. Go into the description in the link down below and sign up for my newsletter. You get the first book free, and that would be a lot of fun. As always, check me out on artofthearcane.com where I post my videos and a little blog with each of them as a companion to expand on what we've talked about. Help out the Master of Kung Fu and Friendship by hitting that like and subscribe button to hear about my new videos. And as always, I'm DC Ferguson. Now have fun and get crafting.